Hello and welcome back to Take a Sip Podcast. I'm Leche. And I'm Tito. All right, Tito. I think we're getting back into the groove of shit. Yes. Unfortunately, you know, it looks like it's another game episode <laughs> following from June's lineup of bucking games, dude. We got yeah. more trailers, unfortunately. Yes. Well, actually, fortunately, they were gamers, you know, so. And one hitting a little bit further back and one even just announced like yesterday as of this recording. Yeah, there's a lot of games that literally just announced like within this week. It's kind of yes. Nuts. But first of all, you know, what are you drinking today, bro? Uh, I've been a little under the weather recently, so I'm just sticking with some soda, really, just to nothing crazy. <laughs> yeah, the same. I'm not feeling under the weather, though, but I definitely have been drinking soda today as well. I think this is my first soda for the day, so I'm, think, I'm drinking a Dr. Pepper cherry. Ew, Dr. Pepper. No, but cherry, dude. Unless they want to sponsor us, which <laughs> Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> PhD over there. <laughs> He's got the money. He's got the money, dude. <laughs> oh, oh shit. <laughs> nah, but, dude, we got some crazy lineups, some really big reveals. Yeah. Honestly, some huge reveals, honestly. Um, starting off with um freaking Metro Prime coming to Switch getting a mass a remaster version for the switch releasing this year which is fucking crazy because i know a lot of people that love fucking metroid dude yeah like our freaking boy andre freaking loves metroid dude that was he said himself that's one of the very first games that he had on his game game boy Mm -hmm. advance so he was like hyped about fucking he'll probably be hyped figuring out that this coming to switch dude yeah, and I think it was just the 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 success from uh, Metroid Dread that we got from last year. Mm-hmm. That I think they're just going back and remastering that entire series. Hopefully, anyways, um, or at least or at least the hits. You get me? Because I know I know Prime was pretty big in in the whole Metroverse. Um, but yeah, seeing the the crazy outburst from Metroid Dread that that was just their spinoff like all right which one do we hit next yeah I know seriously like I think the reason why too is because they thought Metroid was like dead like a dead franchise yeah so, and they realized oh like all oh, people are still interested in fucking the story you know of Metroid and Samus and like you know so I think that was the big like awakening to them like all right people are so interested in this all right let's mm-hmm. uh I think this is another another try just to see how much people are really interested in it to being another if they if this remaster does well this is saying like oh okay so people are still 100% interested in this game series yeah. we should probably go for it like yeah. create another game another sequel prequel whatever um, a prequel would be really appreciated just to fucking see where it's coming from and shit like that Oh, that would be so, yeah. Um, I think they were first really testing the limits. I'm not saying that it was in connection with like my assumption was when they announced Ridley for Smash Bros. Because mm-hmm. so uh for those who don't know, Ridley is part of the whole uh Metroidverse. Um, he's one of the bosses you actually fight in, I believe, the first game, right? Yeah. He was like one of the very original <laughs> enemies, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so there were my assumption is they first like dipped their toe in with Ridley, seeing how much that hype was like, oh my gosh, they brought Ridley in because we already had like Bowser and King DDD as like the yeah. big bosses that you even even Ganondorf. So probably like bringing back uh Ridley was that sort of stuff for them. And yeah, I think that was what helped with Metroid Dread. And then even now with Prime because of Dread. So that's my assumption anyways. You know how my brain oh, yeah. works half the time. Like, I'm not too familiar with the story either, but I just know it's like really fucking good. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the game series itself, like the gameplay, but I just don't pay attention to the story too much, yeah. honestly. So it's not, it's not even gameplay. Like, it's just visually appealing as well, especially with the whole remake that they just did. 
especially prime because it's like uh, in 3d you got me yeah it's a 2d space and it's a first part first person, person shooter so. yeah first yeah, it's person, person. So. Yeah. it's gonna be dope in that end yeah super excited for that one <laughs> i'm talking about super fucking exciting dude i know plenty of people i might be excited to fucking see this shit too man i know oh, you're yeah. fucking excited too man i'm happy. talking about was this literally came out yesterday in the morning dude. um literally the freaking cinematic trailer for god of war ragnarok dude the father and son trailer dude just seeing how good this looks i'm already like wow dude this is gonna be some great storytelling it's gonna be freaking nuts even watching this watching people play through this watching just like how much has evolved from game to game is it going to be a continuous story is it going to be you know there's so many questions and i feel like they're going to rightfully answer all of them here yes it was a very short it was what 30 seconds the little trailer very short yeah 30 um seconds. but again we finally see that um atreus is older mm-hmm. He's no longer a child. He's technically considered an older teen or a young adult. Um, He seems to have gotten a better handle of his bow and his arrows, Mm -hmm. making him a better fighter to be alongside of of our main character. (coughs) Kratos. Of Kratos. And even so then, if you haven't watched the trailer, um, at the end, we get a sight of a giant wolf dog lingering over them in the woods. That means hella is there. Yep. So okay. it's either it's either going to be, okay. well, the assumption is either that it's Garm. Garm. Garm, which is the dog um, guardian of Hell's Gate. Hell's or, Gate, yep. Or it's Fenrir. And it could be either one of those. Two. That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's one of the two. <clears throat> or I wouldn't be surprised if we see the two. It might be the Hellgate Hound for sure. Though. Well, yeah. Mo- yeah. Most likely because um, if we fight Thor because we killed his son in the previous, we killed his two sons in the previous game. Mm-hmm. We Since if we fight Thor, um, we might see like, you know, revenge from like, you know, us killing him. From the yeah. from Odin and from her as well, you know, yeah. or he might be so mad that he unlocks Hela and you know the gates of hell fucking towards Kratos and Atreus, you know. Yeah. And since That's- he's Loki, who knows what other spins and turns we get, you know, in the story. You got me. So yeah, you know, it's it's shaping up to be really fucking good, dude, exactly. honestly. So it's like, oh yeah. shit, dude. <laughs> and again, with just the amount. In Norse mythology, I don't. I'm not so familiar with Norse mythology. I just know bits and pieces from what I've gathered with everything else that we've already been fed about Norse mythology, and then like, yeah. I mean, we'll I'll talk about it soon. But even in in like Smite, Smite has a lot of great mythology and lore for characters. Um, yeah, I mean, Garm and Fenrir are just the most. I don't want to say popular, but like the most kind of known uh, wolf creatures in this yeah. universe. I mean, it could just be a random ass giant wolf too. <laughs> exactly. I doubt it, but you know, it's a it's a good hard sell. Yeah. It might be one of those two for sure. Yeah. Or it could just be one of the other ones that lead into us meeting uh, Garm or Fenrir. True. There could be like even a bigger one. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Yeah, yeah, that could he, be like, one of the that one for being pretty big is still just considered a minion, and then we have the actual giant ones. <laughs> well, I can't even fucking imagine, dude. I mean, but if it's anything like the fights we have, you have to climb, climb them and hit certain spots on their body before they yeah, finally fall. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Who knows, man? But I'm excited. I'm gonna amp for this shit, dude. And we have a release date for this year dude which is fucking exciting yes i mean don't get me wrong it's clamped up with a bunch of fucking great games which is unfortunate dude but this is like the triple a fucking scene dude november yes. is the month for november AAA 9th games, specifically that is no i'm just saying november as a whole there's so many fucking oh because it's already like up. holiday season during that time. exactly yeah. that's what i'm saying so triple a games like big 
fucking named games come out in November every time. Yes. And this is one of those games and it belongs there for a fucking reason. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah, November 9th, 2022, God of War Ragnarok will be selling out. And even, and even till then with um, the amount of the popularity this game series has alone, if you're not putting out a game that's going to catch somebody's attention or has something that's really going to draw your audience in. These game developers are risking a lot going head to head with this game for release dates. Because the only it, other competitor that I could see that's in the same ballpark of excitement is in the Oh no no! Come up for this year. Come up for this year. I know it was a joke. Yes. Yeah, dude. That would, yo. I think that would ruin these games in general. If they announced GTA Six, dude, they that would win probably easily. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I mean, and look at how long it took for us to get GTA Five, and how long alone. it's been since the last one, yo. What oh, fucking oh, GTA Five came out in what 2013, bro? Fuck it's me, bro. almost a decade. A, Dude, that's crazy. It came out when we graduated. Well, when I graduated high school. (laughs) Fuck. That's nuts, dude. Fuck me, dude. But yeah, dude, talking about fucking overdue shit, right? Uh, We're actually, (laughs) uh, that's a good segue for this one. It was long overdue, man. Literally years. I know a lot of people have been waiting for another skate game, another skate in the series, bro. Mm -hmm. So we actually got a freaking. I don't even know what to call this trailer. Well, it's update. <laughs> say it, it's an update video, but they took it a little step further because they know how long it's taken at this point. I think yeah. they're just trying to make a joke a meme, out of it, which I I think I uh, think it worked. That for it sure. worked out so. I think well. it worked, in my opinion. Yeah, they're taking the joke. They're taking the ride for that shit for sure. But yes, Skate has been officially uh, been teased. That the, yes, they are working on it and they're still working on it. That's the whole meme about this. Um, but so far, the little bits that they showed, it's looking good. Don't get me wrong. Like the physics and everything and yeah. like the camera angles and stuff like that are, are actually really clean, really good so far. Mm-hmm. At least the, the finished product version that they showed, not the, yes. you know, the 8 bit shit they showed in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, they didn't give us a time frame for this either. But no, yeah, they're still working on it. It. It, it was, it was, it's what it was. And this is what I love about certain companies that do this stuff. It's they're literally keeping us in the loop. They're open with their community. Yes. And the fact that they made a joke out, out of it by calling the video, or I don't know if this is just how IGN it. just um, labeled the video, but it was literally called skate official quote still working on it trailer. Unquote, trailer. <laughs> um, I mean and even literally... the voiceover that the guy does is like I know it's been a while <laughs> just to show <laughs> we heard you your those. calls and then they just blast their comments like oh skate four skate four um, yeah, we yeah. don't know the official name either too I don't no. know if they're just gonna rehash everything just call it skate again you get me yeah or, they, or is it gonna be officially titled skate four or yeah. whatever they didn't even give us that. They did it. So, and I, th- I think this is just going to go straight into uh, new gen systems. Uh, PS5. Thanks, Xbox God. Series X. They should not do this for PS4 or, three, no, or no. Xbox. Because they're risking then all this hard work and then just taking a step backwards. Yeah. In a way. So, because yeah. you're more prone to get like working on old gen hardware at this point is not worth it. If you're creating games from scratch like this again, it's like better just to use the new upgraded shit, especially if you're using, you know, Unreal Engine 5, forget about it, bro. That is a waste of potential if you're fucking launching that shit on PS4 and Xbox. Yeah. You know, the old not series version. So, yeah. But yeah, man, it's good to hear that fucking skate is coming back. Yeah. We'll see how it actually sells because I think people are kind of like, past the skate shit you get me yeah because skate i remember when skate and like all those like tony hawk pro yeah. games were like the shit back in like 2010 i want to yeah. say that's when they were like the shit people were playing skate 3 the living shit out of it you get me um i don't know how popular that is now if people are still if there's still a market for it but i mean who knows man 
they might have some creative shit in there that might actually make it worth playing it. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, they already had like, they showed a couple of things where it's like, besides the regular running mechanics with like the skateboard in your hands, you can now like swing from certain places to certain places. Um, I saw how many people there was, right? I wish yeah. if they made that like an actual thing, like, oh, you could play with your friends literally as like a open world skate thing. Oh yeah. my God. Kind of like GTA, that's the next just step. skating. That is the next step for them. Yeah. If they implement that, it's going to work for them, honestly. Yeah. And it seemed that they were having like some creative room type of place, kind of like uh, how uh, Fork Knife has, where you could like create your own worlds and certain maps or even just like design certain platforms that people have to like make go through like a course almost. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know dude. Hopefully it all works know. out at the end for them. Because I know how big this series already was as well when it was out. It was a beloved uh, series, too. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. It's like they don't want this. Type, it's like oh, like it makes you feel like oh, I remember when life was good type of game. You get me? I feel like that's how it, <laughs> that's how it is for like you know when we talk about like Bioshock. Like oh, I remember like yeah, like I had less stress. You know, not worried about this bullshit. Like about Bioshock or Dead Space when we talk about it. You know, yeah, it, it holds a special place in people's heart. Yeah. So, um, speaking of special places in people's heart, hell yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna let you take the lead on this one because I know this is your shit. Yes, this is. Um, so yeah, speaking of holding special places in people's hearts, Smite, one of the games I've been playing a lot recently, and I bring up very continuously. <laughs> Um, is now doing a collaboration with Nickelodeon. Um, they're bringing five specific um, character skins into the game for gods, obviously. Um, and the best part of about- Sorry? I said their own separate characters. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's different characters from different series as well. It's not just all from one show. <laughs> Um, and this is just a step better for them heading the right way. You get me? I mean, they've done major collaborations already. Uh, Stranger Things, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, why am I blinking? Avatar, The Last Airbender, and even Korra. Um, so much Nick shit. I just, yes, I think Nickelodeon is literally one of their biggest, uh, like collaborators for sure which is yeah, crazy at, at this point yeah and hopefully like i mean they just other companies rip off their pages like and real add this page into their books like we could still get some hype out of this stuff you got me like old school stuff is still being brought forward and modernized in certain ways so um what i want to see from smite you know like this makes me feel this is more for like the old guys for like guys from the 80s and shit um it would be dope to see since they added transformers i know they added transformers, oh, they a while transformers yeah so you know how transformers came came out in the 80s and shit uh-huh. it would be dope to see the thundercats be skins <gasps> in the fucking game show, so in cool. the game as well because like and i could do, think they have they the right work. characters that's what i'm saying for it yeah i'm putting it in perspective like what gods and like the last time i played with you and like i'm trying to remember like the game style and the gameplay for certain characters, how you were explaining yeah. it to me. And I think it could work, dude. Yeah. So I'm like, oh dude, my gosh. I don't see why not, dude. Fuck. That would be so dope. <laughs> and then oh if they gosh. do, yeah. if they do Thundercats, they, it's like, it would be criminal not to do He-Man after that. Yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch. You got me? Like, yeah. even so then, with just doing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you can even do in a way the Power Rangers as well. Ooh, the power and game. make all their weapons like virtual stuff that they summon. You got me, and they Up all to a certain have... point. I was probably <laughs> get, like, you could, you could, of course, it has to be mighty morphing, like the yes, fuck. yeah, and then zeal up to that. No more than that. <laughs> Don't go past them. <laughs> you can stop right there. I'm um, sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, but going back to this. It's not a battle pass. I don't think they announced it as a battle pass, but it's just an event, a collaboration event that they're doing. And again, it ranges from 
different age ranges. So somebody who's watched Nickelodeon growing up is going to find one character that is like, I remember him. I remember her. Um, so to start off, I'll start with the older ones. We have Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. Um, I believe next up would be Powdered Toast Man, who is from the Rhett and Stimpy show. Yep. Um, we have Invader Zim from Invader Zim. I know a lot of people fucking love that shit. Yeah. That'd be a character. Uh, I believe her name was XJ9, a.k.a. Jenny, from My Life as a Teenage Robot. That's the shit right there, dude. That used to be one of my favorites. That and Danny Phantom were like... And, well, perfect, because now we have Danny from Danny Phantom as well. That's so, um, so fucking cool, dude. Yeah. And I believe you have um the the way the event works, the event is only gonna give you powder toast man, invader Zim, Rocco, and Jenny. And then once you collect all four of those skins, you then unlock Danny Phantom. And the good one, right? <laughs> the more popular one. Yeah, which I mean, if it wasn't for that, I probably exactly. only would have unlocked Danny Phantom. And probably yeah. Jenny, but now that I have to collect all four to get Danny, I have to play the event. It's literally an incentive to fucking keep you playing. Yes. Like, hey, if you want this one, you got to keep you know fucking playing it. Yeah, and um, from the little gameplay that they showed, a lot of these characters look very smooth. Obviously, compared to everything that is human and people like having a cartoon character run through there is just funny in general but there are so many other skins that they have that just they literally have a walking hot dog that has like a little pitchfork as his weapon recently they did a hamburger whose shield is a box of fries and he swings around a straw. And when you swing the straw, you see the soda come out of the little hole from like what you're <laughs> sipping on. It's getting a little bit like, oh, OK, like it's not taking itself too seriously. No. And that's and and that's why I love watching the live patch notes show of yeah. Smite that they do, because like you see the development team talking about these characters and just how like, life is behind the scenes in a way. And it's like they know it's it's a game and it's a joke they're not taking it so seriously but they also know it's their job to take it seriously and i know th- actually smite got some got into some controversy i think uh like t- about a week or two weeks ago that one of the popular um streamers did a tournament for smite um and i think literally the smite community like didn't like that he did smite as the tournament and kind of like he says like they were the most they were the grossest most meanest fucking community he's ever been a part of just for that week that he did that he never wants to do a tournament for smite again thanks to that even though he made the directory for twitch for 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 smite i think go over almost 129 thousand viewers you know that's kind of nuts to even yeah 100 that's a lot of people watching smite watch that tournament but yeah, that was a, a little bit of a controversy because a lot of um, hardcore Smite people were like just dissing on them and dissing the whole event and stuff like that. So, but it brought the game to light. You get me? It brought the the game invigorated the the thing. And also, there was an issue because there were so many people trying to get in the game since they saw them playing it uh-huh. that it crashed the servers. I heard oh, a gosh. couple. Of- for like a couple of hours because they couldn't handle how many people were coming oh, in. Oh, I think that explained why I couldn't get in for a while. Uh, yeah, a, a couple, couple of times. Weeks. Yeah. yeah, so that's <laughs> why. Um, so it was, it was crazy on that end. Like, oh, you know, the Smite game is fantastic on its own, but you know, some bad apples make make it hard for you know the for the people get into the community. Unfortunately, yeah. at that end. So. And it's always Amen. those a lot bad more apples. Smite, though. Yeah. And it's always those bad apples that give great game series a bad rap because it's like it could be so much better and so much calmer if you literally 
play it casually like the That's title sure. of the game says it is you're playing casuals so relax if you want to go yeah. hardcore get in competitive and i get it's a tournament and everything you know well, who else what? says that dude <laughs> destiny players <laughs> I'm kidding. I hate bringing that up. I know, but but, but yeah, it, like that's it just the annoying part of it, and it's like that's why a lot of the times, honestly, for a game that's just strictly PvP, I'm surprised I've played that this much, even in Overwatch, when I barely touch any PvP in Destiny, my number one played game. <laughs> so, but but yeah. I mean, yes, there's going to be ups and downs everywhere you go. Certain collaborations, like I can't believe they did uh, Stranger Things and didn't include da, 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 da. It's like, okay, like we also don't know what the rules and regulations were when they made the contracts yeah, to yeah, collab. They probably said like, hey, well, if we give you this money, can we have this many characters and which characters are you okay with us having? Like yeah. simple as that. That's probably the agreement they went with, you yeah. know? And depending, on, and depending on how that first collaboration works, we could do it again and add different characters. Yeah. That's how literally it works. Yeah. That's how relationships and partnerships are built. Uh, if you give, you know, you try once and if it doesn't work out for either one side, yeah. they, you know, there's n- no one else is going to try. You got mm-hmm. I me? Mean? Because it wasn't worth the first time. No. Yeah. And that was the whole thing with the T- TMNT one. Um, they originally did the two versions of all four turtles, the old school one, the retro, and then the new modernized one with the one that had, um, what's her name? Megan Fox. Megan Fox as, as April. And I think it did so well. They went back and they added, um, they added like shredder i think they added splinter after or even added extra skins for them um they yeah, added they so well yeah they added the god i wish i was more into tmnt lore that brain crab thing that's like in the stomach of a robot that he that he controls uh, i forget but yeah, they 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 added more skins after that, and some even with uh, Twitch Prime that like do like little bundle drop stuff that you like claim after for in-game skins or loots. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, if this goes well, I hope they add more Nickelodeon characters following up after that. You know, like fucking SpongeBob and shit. Like that's the main one a lot of people want to see because it's just like that would be nuts, dude. Like, weird where the aquatics. Fuck? Yeah, like where the hell which guy will even fucking house that motherfucker? You get me? Not even that. It's like who's gonna be a karate butt kicking squirrel in an underwater suit? The three characters <laughs> that make the most sense to even like get going from SpongeBob specifically will literally be Patrick. Uh, SpongeBob and Sandy, like those are the only three that I can think of. No, you would have Larry the Lobster beating Larry the lobster. asses. <laughs> well, Larry too, and then the Squidward too with the Kraken or where the fuck it's called, Cthulhu. What? Oh, okay, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It, yeah. That could be a thing too, you know. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, man? Who knows? But it just depends at that point if, if they're do. able to make. The, the character's moves somehow adapt to bring out the likeness of that character. You get me? Because like when you think of SpongeBob, you think spatula, Krabby Patties, jellyfishing. Now, what what, character relate, what God relates to that the most? Relates to that or has moves that you could visually change to make a jellyfish pop out of your hand. I see Sandy would make the easy would be the easiest one because she's literally a karate master. You know, you yeah. know I mean like that you just find like whatever character does the most, you know, that's actually okay. hands on. Yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah. And all you have to do is occasionally pop in the, the karate gloves that they use. Yeah, it just does like a meme type of thing. Yeah. Or if like if she has a move where she can lasso somebody is to like the yeah. The Texas lasso that she always talks about. And she yeah. wears like a Texas hat when she does the animation, you know, just yeah. for fun. And if she has like a distance move, she could just throw like a little uh 
purpose. Oh, she's, she's a scientist. She has a little gun. Vial or a vial thing. Or a vial, yeah. yeah. Or something like that. You get me? Yeah. We're thinking it for them at this point. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Brainstorming for them. Collab with us. We got ideas. <laughs> Oh gosh, I think I think we need to like step back a little bit and take a little yeah. break. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a little break from here. <laughs> and back from talking about Nickelodeon and Smite and stuff, um, we got word an actual final confirmation of this game. Um, specifically, I think it's just perfect timing that they're finishing this game. Honestly, because it's going to coincide with the movie. Yes. And of course, I'm talking about uh, Avatar Frontiers of Pan- uh, Pandora. Yeah, Frontiers actually, of Pandora. Okay, I was going to say, I don't know if that's the full name or not, or yes. if they're just teasing it as that. No, you're um, right. It's Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Yeah. So this game got announced back, I believe, in Summer Game Fest of 2018. Yeah. Um, and we're actually getting the first actual official looks of this game. And it is looking visually amazing, dude, honestly. And I think that's what they were waiting for. I think they were waiting for it. Probably, they probably had the story, the script, and all that stuff ready for this game. Even some renders as well. Yeah. But they were waiting for the right engine to run this shit, I feel. Probably. I think that was part of the plan. Um, a little bit on the game, I think you are still... We're not, obviously not following the main storyline of the characters we know from the movie, we just yeah. do know we are going to be fighting humans in the giant mech on Pandora. Um, but it could just be that you were one of the warriors during that wartime. Mm-hmm. Or this could just be a whole different type of storyline when previously the humans tried it to invade yeah, we before the, the actions story. of the movie. Yeah. So who knows where this actually takes place, like timeline wise? Where, yeah. When and where this takes place. So the vibes I get from this, honestly, is from you know uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. It gives me that type of vibe since it's a first person action adventure game. Yeah. So it gives me that type of vibe that it's gonna be like that, especially, um, you know how in that game you could like interact with the animals and you can control them. Yes. Same thing with Avatar in the world. So it's like, I feel like they already had the fundamentals there. All they had to do was like, you know, reskin it for their fucking game, in my opinion. Hopefully it's not like that. I'm yeah. Really <laughs> wrong as shit. You know, I hope I'm really wrong. So um, you just randomly see an actual AK pop up instead of a bow. <laughs> bro. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm like, all right, that's what I like to see. It's different. <laughs> not in the right way, but it's different. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's so many ways that they could go about this too. You get me, like crafting specific um, weapons, kind of like in Skyrim. Almost, you have different types of bows depending on what tree life you're using. Not just bows. Maybe you can use spears. You can use the little rocks, whatever the fuck they're called, to like oh, like slings. Slings. There you go. That's the word. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't think of it. <laughs> I I mean that could be wrong still, but it it no, seems like a sling that you. It, shoot. Sound, it sounds right. Yeah, it sounds right. <laughs> Is it right? We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Correct us if that's right or wrong. Every <laughs> definitely, definitely though, and then it's like the the wildlife, and we got a couple of scenes of the nighttime. The nighttime's gonna look so cool and dope, dude. I hope they do that shit justice, dude. <laughs> I hope they do the night justice because from the movie, god damn it, dude. Yeah. I hope they do it it's justice. Yeah. Um, and definitely, I mean, fast traveling, you're either gonna be able to use the horse or those flying dragon thingies. Yeah, dude, the terra pterodactyls. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I definitely hope they add like other creatures. Other <laughs> creatures. Cause I think they were in close um, they were working a lot with the actual movie production team. Yeah, you know, like James Cameron and shit. <laughs> yeah, the whole James Pre- James Cameron um, production uh, studios team to, I guess, create the game. And like we mentioned before, even with um, God, what was the movie that we spoke about that was in collaboration with the game with the. 
Avatar? Uh, which one? No, that was a collaboration with Avatar? No. We spoke about another company working with, I guess, the... Oh, do, with the directors. You're yes. Yes. Games are working with the directors. Was it the Hunger Games that we spoke about? No. Uh, no, it was not. Definitely not the Hunger Games. But even before, like, the, like it's just, this is just another thing of, like game creators or movie creators or show creators Coming working together source, working with from the source exactly from the mastermind behind to make sure it's all accurate not just accurate but cohesive they're not just accurate. adding a, another <laughs> random creature that has no place to be in there when we didn't even see it in the original context yeah you get me so what I'm hoping this movie uh, this movie I'm already getting my head ahead of myself what this uh, game does too, because I know in the first movie specifically, they showed us a lot of land creatures, right? The mm -hmm. second movie, of course, it's mainly in the water. Land I'm wondering water. what water creatures we will get and stuff like that. And I hope they show and, you know, we get to interact with the actual water creatures as well. So... True, or even... even <laughs> if, I'm sorry to cut you off, but even like... It is a game, you got me? So depending on what type of timeline they have for this game, whether they want to create another one, or they could just add a DLC, you got me, that just unlocks a whole new area being the way of the water that we're going to see in the film. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, again, I just love this whole series, the whole Avatar series. Yeah. Both The Last Airbender and this one. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. No. I, Pan, the, the world of Pandora is, like, one that's been untouched and, like, unexplored, I feel. For so More long. Off, for so long, yeah. I know, for me specifically, it's literally the fucking Wizarding World of fucking Harry Potter, for sure. Yes. For me, that is, like, the world I want to explore more. I have not seen... Like the you know Fantastic Beast series, even though I should honestly, if I'm yeah, probably should. But I'm waiting for all of them to come out because you know there's a lot of them. Uh, yeah. yeah. Even though I heard this latest one wasn't that great, but at the same time I definitely still want to watch it. Um. Yeah, dude, it's just seeing. I want to see the world crafting in this. Like I want them to do justice for this game. Yes. A hundred percent. Everyone does. It's yeah. a fucking great series so far. <laughs> the next Destiny Killer? No. <laughs> <laughs> and going off of new stories and hopefully continuing stories, right? And um, killing people off. Killing people off, yeah. Horror fucking series for sure. Yeah. Um, we're talking about last story here. The, the Dark Picture Anthology is making another game for 2022 which is fucking nuts to me like how are they doing this how we just got the query and we already have another game set up for later this year this is nuts bro these guys it is are working nuts. overtime bro these guys are literally working overtime yeah and of the way it's uh they worded it they worded this in in the in the article they're saying it's the finale to season one of the Dark Pictures Anthology. So there is most likely a season two following up this massive games or stories that they already set up right now from the beginning. So like I like to think of this like this game series as like movies that you actually could play if that makes yes. sense yeah that's so the it, best way to put it it is literally fucking phenomenal dude like these games are like so pleasing to play for that same reason because it literally feels like you're watching a movie but you get to choose what the fuck the like the main character does or the side characters do yeah so i think that's the biggest freaking that's the craziest thing about this like i think i enjoy like about these games in general and i definitely want to see what they're going to do for this one of course i don't know what this one's going to be about um but what do what do they mean by like the finale for season one and what does the future entail for this series for sure yeah 
Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I was gonna say you're probably searching up little things here, right? Yeah. Real so, is, <laughs> can you see it in my face? <laughs> <laughs> On your glasses. Oh. <laughs> the movement. Oh. Um. <laughs> so yeah. So really, with um the pe- the beginning games of like Little Hope, The Man of Medan, and House of Ashes, we always had the same guy the older guy in his weird library um, being like the narrator almost of the, yeah. of the whole stories. Um, just only with the query that it was a different person. It was the older witch lady in like some weird cabin. But from what I'm seeing in the devil in me, it's back to the older guy um, back in his library, I believe. So I don't know if they just did it for the query to see how people would react with a different type of narrator um, and then switching back to to the older gentleman. Um, and if that's going to be something we might be seeing in, see, in season two, even. But, I mean, yeah. I mean, this whole world, worlds that they've created in these games have been incredible. They've been so fucked, I don't want to live in them. And, and like Fuck you said, that, <laughs> like you said, it's a playable movie. And yeah. sometimes the cutscenes get your attention so much, you set your controller down. And the next thing you know, you're in a quick time event. And unless you're fully ready and conscious, you're losing a character right there or a hit yeah, point or something. That's what I like about it. It's like, oh my God. It's like you're your god your god's hand in this fucking movie like that i'm like oh my god bro it is fucking crazy <laughs> i remember when uh until dawn fucking came out dude i was like yo what is this game dude? why does it look so good and then i'm like i watched uh i forgot who i watched play this shit uh, i think it was um i don't know i don't know if it was <coughs> it was Markiplier. Markiplier. I'm not sure if it was him. I think I watched Jack. Oh, Jack's had the guy. Yeah, I think I watched his. And I thought it was like, oh, my God, this game. I literally had to fuck I, every day. I was waiting for a fucking upload because I, yes. was, I was hooked immediately. Yes, 100%. I was like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> and then this, this the, shit is so good. <laughs> and then it's just the gameplay and then the added bonus of their commentary over the game. It yeah, just it makes just, those videos so popular and so awesome to watch. Hell yeah, dude. Seriously. And like every every time any of these new games pop out, I'm like, who can I watch? Who's gonna make me laugh while I'm shitting my pants? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely one of those games I would not personally play myself, but I will love watching this shit. Like watch yeah. game through this, like watch someone else play it, dude. Yes. Even if it's a streamer or something, dude. Because it's gonna be fucking awesome for sure. It is. And what I'm not liking of the devil in me is I'm seeing a lot of dolls in it. Dolls, fuck that. Oh. <laughs> Annabelle. Oh. I I don't oof, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> she was the one behind it all the entire time. Oh, dude. Oh no. <laughs> From until dawn to within the, same the devil in me. <laughs> it's within the same conjuring universe. Oh no. We see the psychics pop up at the end. The nun comes out. Oh no! Ooh. Then this one is serious. Now, oh, that's that's season two. You then play as the nun, going through all the games, trying to Dude, kill that, everyone. That would be a brilliant way to go from right. So if you're here from like the actual like victims, the survivors, the yeah. So what if you're going from the enemy side, right? Season two is literally like what they see. And what they do, yeah. Like, oh, that's clever, dude. So, oh, dude, so many options. That's how you, cool. How you that would be your, dope. How you plan your line of attack? Yeah, Who you dude. take out first? Do you fuck it up? Like, do you actually kill everyone, or do you fucking fuck it up so bad that you kill nobody? Right? Like, or oh, yeah, or like you kill only a handful and get caught. You know, accidentally uh, bring yourself to light before you were supposed to. Whew. So then they all start getting ready super early in the game instead of later at the end. Yeah. Like it's either, I think, oh, I already, I can already fucking picture multiple like games, like within that, like, like section shit. It's either you're like 
a serial killer, like a psychopath or a sociopath, right? Yeah. And just go through the, the limes uh, slowly, you know, uh, seducing, tricking, you know, being a sly fucking dog through everyone. And then you slowly kill one by one, you know, it's like fucking playing clue with yourself, even though yeah. you know you're already the killer. Yeah. You, know, like, you have God, to separate yeah. them all. You have to get the interest of one to run away and somebody follow, and then the other three continue the main path. Yeah, dude. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Tito. Oh, God. Why are we game developers? (laughs) The amount of ideas from just talking it out, bro. We're just five heads, bro. Not just losing hair, but still at the same time. Well, speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. Oh, dude. dude. Don't worry, dude. It's don't, coming. Don't put that <laughs> negative energy on me. Coming. I already put enough negative negative energy on myself. <laughs> I don't need more. Yeah, dude. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's really it for me. Yeah, that's it for me too, yo. I did. That's a fucking great ending, dude. Just talking about movies yeah. within games. <laughs> All right. Well, besides that, let's. Do you have anything else to add? Um, Any final little shout outs you want to give? Shout outs? Maybe that we might potentially have a little mini series coming out in between the weeks, if potentially if we could do it, if we could keep up with it, of course. Um, yes. It'll just be, I think it'll just be little nuggets here, little like whenever we can't do them. Yeah. But we're going to, we're thinking about, we both talked about it last week, um, that we're going to have a little mini series and because it's a running joke between us. Yes, <laughs> us, um, that we are going to start a little mini thing called Destiny Killer. Uh, of how many games have been labeled as Destiny Killers? So we're gonna <laughs> literally go down the line, uh, starting from the very first quote unquote Destiny Killer, and literally talk about the game and you know the goods, the bads, the pros and cons, you know, and stuff like that. Comparing why it could have worked, and why it didn't work? Yeah, exactly. So we're just literally going to go through, you know, run it through the ringer and see what we think about them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But besides that, Leche, where can people find you? People can find me at Instagram at Leche Minosa, or you guys can follow me on Twitch at Technofreak95. And how about you, Tito? I am also on Instagram at One Alpha Penguin and also on Twitch at One Alpha Penguin. You guys can follow the podcast at Take a Sip underscore pod. And you guys can even uh, subscribe at us or at youtube.com forward slash Take a Sip. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my brain cut off for a second. Um, but yes, go follow, like, subscribe, share. Uh, share with your friends. I mean, you listen to us, you like us. Somebody else might listen to us and like us as well. Please, <laughs> we like. We would like to get this community bigger, but we're definitely happy with what we got. Honestly, oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> and feedback. We would like some feedback. What we could do better. Uh, what you guys enjoy. If there's certain types of stories you guys hear from us, if you guys would like for us to do a couple of more. <laughs> pop culture stuff as well which i know it's in our thing uh in our bio and stuff that we always say but we very rarely do it um but if you guys are willing to listen to those i think well i'm down anyways i don't know about let you bring in oh, that type of I'm stuff into life i'm always down to talk about different <laughs> things things especially that i'm not used to talking yeah yeah. Um, different stuff to the table bringing different stuff to the table for sure mm. and on that note thank you guys so much for listening we highly appreciate it and we will see you all next week bye 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 guys